we're going to take a peek into my web development toolbox and discover the top tools for 2021. Lock it in, because here we go. Hi, I'm Mark Glassoff, and welcome to the channel. I help people become professional web and mobile developers and digital designers. If you're interested in improving your development and design skills, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel for new videos each week. Today, we're taking a look at my picks for the top tools used by web developers. I'm going to be making a pick in a number of different categories. Let's get started so you can build your professional development toolkit. First, and perhaps the most important tool, your text editor. No developer gets far without a text editor, and everyone has their favorite. As a developer, you'll spend all day every day in this tool, so you want to make sure you choose one that works for you. For my money, the best text editor is Visual Studio Code, developed by Microsoft. Since so many text editors have similar functionality, it's difficult to stand out in this category. VS Code does manage to climb to the top of the pack for a number of reasons. First, VS Code has excellent code completion. Microsoft calls their code completion technology IntelliSense. Not only does it offer standard code completion, but it also offers syntax highlighting and context-based completion based on elements like variable type, imported libraries, and variable scope. Visual Studio is based on an extension-based architecture. There are dozens of extensions for everything from C coding to Kotlin to HTML and JavaScript. Activating an extension is as simple as pressing the install button in the Visual Studio Code interface. The extension will install automatically, and all the documentation you need to use the extension is available within Visual Studio Code itself. With other editors, extensions often slow down editing. Visual Studio Code runs extensions on a separate processor thread, meaning that the editor's native functions aren't affected. Extensions are available in the Visual Studio Code marketplace, and new extensions are being added all the time. One of my favorite features of the Visual Studio Code environment is the integrated debugger. Being able to debug your code without leaving the Visual Studio Code interface is definitely a time saver. You also don't have to add debugging statements to your code as you can track and trace variables through the execution of your application. The final VS Code feature I'll mention is integrated Git. If you're a heavy Git user like me, you'll find the integrated Git features to be very convenient. I use GitHub and I can make code commits and deploy my code to GitHub right from the Visual Studio Code environment. If multiple developers are working on the same code base, this will help you prevent frustrating code conflicts and ensure everyone is working on the most current version of the code. If you've been coding for any length of time, you know that you often spend more time testing and debugging than actually writing code. For testing and debugging, you need a testing tools like Chrome DevTools. Chrome DevTools have been around so long that many of us take them for granted, but this suite of tools is the go-to testing environment for just about all professional web developers. Chrome DevTools include a range of tools that allow you to test the responsive design of your page to tools that trace complex network interactions. The console tab within DevTools displays errors and warnings generated by your code. It also allows you to trace variables and execute statements against the current state of the DOM, which is the document object model. The document object model maintains state in a web application. The sources tab provides traditional debugging and trace features that allow you to step through your code one line at a time. In order to debug your code in DevTools, set a breakpoint where your code will stop executing. The code will stop at this point, and you can use the Sources tab or the console to see the value of your variables, browser DOM elements, and even view the call stack. The Network tab shows you all the server calls your code is generating. This is important to trace performance delays and problems with APIs that your code uses. The Performance and Memory tabs will help you figure out what might be causing other slowdowns or memory leaks in your application. I use the Application tab in Chrome DevTools quite a bit. This tab can be used to visualize any storage that your application uses. It can show you any values stored in the session storage and local storage objects, as well as allow you to access the IndexedDB and WebSQL databases that are available in your browser. Any cookies stored will be visible here as well. 
If you're not familiar with Chrome DevTools, this is one I'd suggest you add to your toolbox today. Almost any web development job you apply to will expect you to be able to understand and use the Chrome DevTools. For years, websites were mostly designed in Photoshop. While it got the job done, Photoshop was overkill for designing web pages. Now, lighter, more agile tools are used for prototyping websites. The best of these tools is Figma. The free version of Figma has all the features that most developers need, and it'll allow you to prototype not just websites, but many other types of digital products as well. In design capitals like New York, Austin, and San Francisco, Figma has become so popular that meetup groups have formed around the tool. Figma is a collaboration first tool. This means it's designed for you to collaborate with other designers and developers on your team and the Figma community as a whole. The Figma community has dozens of plugins to enhance the Figma prototyping tool. There are plugins that assist with site usability and others that will inject random user avatars into your prototype designs. You will also find Figma users sharing everything from iOS 15 material designs to classic emojis. Figma is easy to use so you can begin creating prototypes in just minutes. The web-based interface is clear and tools are intuitive. Figma allows you to easily export parts of your design as well as translate your designs to HTML and CSS. From the Inspect tab, I can view all of the relevant properties of any element I select in the design. I can also view the CSS, iOS Swift code, or Android XML code necessary to create the design. This can be a great time saver as the coding is done for you based on the design you've created in Figma. Figma is great for creating both rough wireframes and complete animated prototypes. Figma is a flexible tool and you'll find the more you use it, the more you'll find reasons to make it your primary tool for prototyping and digital design. The next tool is so popular and important, most hiring managers and recruiters will assume you have it. The tool is GitHub, the social code repository. Let's take a second to make sure we're clear about the difference between Git and GitHub. GitHub is a free open source version control system that is very popular in the software development industry. GitHub is the social version of Git, allowing you to publicly share your Git repositories with other developers. You're free to use code others post on GitHub and can contribute to the community projects. I've heard that many interviewers ask if you've contributed to any projects during job interviews. Personally, I have somewhere around 100 separate GitHub repositories for different projects I've worked on over the years. GitHub doesn't just store your version code, but also stores pull requests, provides project boards, and significant analytics about your code base. I always recommend to new developers that they start their GitHub repository now. Your GitHub is a record of your personal development as a programmer. As you become more skilled, your contributions will become more significant, and recruiters and hiring managers can use this as a measure of your growth. Modern development is most often a team sport. With so many developers working from home, collaboration tools have become a critical part of the workflow. There are a number of collaboration tools that are popular with developers. One of the most popular and my personal favorite is Trello. Trello allows you to create boards consisting of configurable cards. These cards can represent individual project components, steps in a process, or just about anything else you can imagine. Trello excels at helping developers collaborate on linear processes. Cards can be moved from one Trello stack to another, and even from one Trello board to another, representing the steps or stages in your development process. Trello boards can be viewed as project timelines, calendars, or even individual to-do lists while maintaining the integrity of the underlying data. The key to Trello's success is to design your Trello cards so they contain all the information you might ever need, and then create displays that show what is needed by the individual user roles. Trello's Butler feature will help you automate tasks within Trello, eliminating some of the tedious work that goes along with most collaboration systems. If you're working on front-end development, you should be testing your code with a server running, not just using file and open to test code in a browser. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, there is a version of Simple HTTP Server available to you. Written in Python, Simple HTTP Server will allow your code to be served to the browser as it would be in a production environment. Using a server will ensure that all the browser features work as they would when your site is released. You run the simple HTTP server directly from your command line. You can specify a port for your server and then test your site by addressing localhost and the port number. 
Most Macs come with simple HTTP server installed. For most Windows machines, you'll have to go through a short installation process. If you're new to coding, I do recommend that you start using this tool as it'll make testing your code easier and more realistic. There are of course times that you need complete server side testing as well. Obviously the testing environment is gonna depend on which language you're using on the back end. If you're using PHP, which while not sexy, is still the most popular backend language deployed today, I recommend XAMPP, X-A-M-P-P. XAMPP includes the Apache web server, the PHP programming language, and the MariaDB relational database system, which is from the same people who made MySQL. When you run XAMPP, you can control your server, language, and database plugins right from your desktop. What I like about XAMPP is it's pretty much plug and play. Once you download and install XAMPP, you can run the server and start coding. You don't need to do a lot of configuration to make the server run on your desktop. However, if you choose, you can configure any aspect of the Apache server or the PHP programming language. A front-end framework handles some of the heavy lifting of front-end CSS development. A good framework will make screen layout and responsive design easier for you as a developer. Bootstrap now in its fifth major version, is my pick for front-end framework. Bootstrap handles digital page layout using a grid system, which is implementing Flexbox under the hood. The notation is easy to learn, and you can get up and running with Bootstrap pretty quickly. When it comes to responsive design, Bootstrap will allow you to specify design elements around six breakpoints, ranging from extra small to extra extra large screens, which are greater than 1400 pixels wide. Bootstrap also has a number of automatic column layout features We can take much of the tedium out of responsive design work. Bootstrap has its own typography and image display engines, which allow you to create clean, responsive designs without any design talent or knowledge. Bootstrap comes with over 20 components, allowing you to easily create on-screen elements like accordions, carousels, and tabs. You implement Bootstrap through a series of well-documented classes and Bootstrap-specific attributes. Bootstrap naming conventions are fairly consistent, which make the library easy to learn and use, even for beginners. And finally, our last category, web development frameworks. There are a number of popular web development frameworks in use today, but only one can be my top choice, and that framework is React.js. React, which advertises itself as a library for building user interfaces, is in reality much more. React is component-based, which means it breaks the user interface into a series of components. For example, navbars, footers, and information cards may all be components in a website design. Components are designed to be reusable and are configured using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Components have a state, which can be altered using JavaScript code. Your JavaScript, instead of accessing elements directly, interacts with the React Virtual DOM. The Virtual DOM, in turn, updates your components and changes the view. Components are created in JSX, which is an easy to learn extension to JavaScript. The reason I picked React over other libraries is the demand for entry-level developers working in React. There are more open jobs for React developers right now than any other framework, and over half those jobs are entry-level. This means that a new developer versed in React has a great chance of landing a job. So there you go, my top tools for web development. I hope you found this list useful. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If there are web tools that you find useful, I'd love to know about them. Please leave a comment below with a few tools that you find useful. Finally, I hope you'll check out my professional developer program, which will teach you all the skills you need to learn to become a professional web or mobile developer. The link's below. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Lassoff, and I'll see you in the next video.